I want to talk about the journey um, of keeping my family together. These videos have been, and photographs have been taken from the time when I was still working in the UK all the way up to when we moved to Spain. First thing I want to say, I don't normally share this sort of thing, but I do just want to show other people it is possible to keep a family together even if the system works against you. Now, a lot of these things I don't normally share, so some of it's going to be quite personal, um, but at the same time, it's got to be more about me than sharing too much about my family. Um, there'll be some photos related to the kids, etc., but um, not too much related to my family life. I, I like to keep my family life private where possible, but I know some people are going through the hardships of dealing with the British immigration system and dealing with it in other countries as well, where the criteria can often be very, very difficult. My main issue being that the UK wants a year's pay slips, a year this, blah, blah, blah. But I, most of the stuff I do, if I'm overseas, there's no paperwork. Um, when I work in the Middle East, there is no paperwork. I get paid in cash. When I work um, on the internet, it's for myself. So there's no, the accounting and everything else is not the way the UK would like it. So it makes it very difficult without long periods away, but also the way they've been manipulating the figures and reasons for stopping people becoming, uh, uh, keeping the families together. I just thought it was a complete waste of space trying to work with the system. Um, but this was followed with the fact I don't actually want to be in the UK. I don't like the UK. Um, but on top of that, um, a prime example of this was a friend of mine, his son. They're in the UK, they're living in the UK. He applied for his son's passport um, to be converted from Filipino to British. He's got a right of a British passport. It was a year, it had already been a year, and then he'd gone in to process his passport and said, what are you doing? What do you need? You've asked for more documents than you should require. And then it's still taking a year and you haven't responded yet. What is going on? Because he was in the passport office himself because he needed his doing. You know what? It was on the doorstep the following week. Done. No questions. Bang. They're delaying them on purpose. It's, it's all to do with falsifying a reduction of immigration figures. That is severely wrong for me because they're penalizing British citizens for the people coming in from Bangladesh and everywhere else. Um, but anyway, moving on, this is an insight into a bit of my life. Bear in mind, I've been away from home for about a year now. Um, I haven't seen my wife and kids in a year. Um, I'm now going to be traveling to Paris to uh, drive a car from Worcester down to a ferry, pick the ferry up, drive to Paris, and then pick a plane up at um, Charles de Gaulle Airport to fly to the Philippines. So, you'll either find it interesting or boring. <laughs> Hi my love, it's just gone 10 past 11 and I'm about to head down to Cali. Um, see you in a few hours. Um, I'm going to be struggling for internet. I'm not sure where I'll get free internet and I can't... It'll cost me like 15 pounds for one day which seems a bit much because I'd, I'd need to get a package. Anyway, love and miss you and seeing you very soon. Love you. The journey took about three, three and a half hours um, to get all the way down to Dover where I picked the ferry up. I purchased a old Vauxhall Astra uh, with GM Motors, Opel, depending on what country you're in. Um, bought a separate top box and as you can see, I've got a bike car on the back as well. Um, we're pretty loaded up. I'd filled up the car with about half full because obviously we're going to be getting the luggage from the Philippines as well. Um, but now I'm sort of sitting at the docks in Dover waiting to get loaded and negotiating a bit on the price of the tickets. It cost me about £80, £90 for the 
tickets across. As you can see, the sun's already up as we're leaving Dover. Um, here I am driving onto the ferry. Um, I have to say the ferry system is very, very efficient between the UK and Calais. But it's not surprising with the the high volume of traffic and trucked tr trucked and goods between the UK and France as the UK imports way more than <laughs> exports. But the thing with this is it was a nice easy run, but I'm starting to feel tired already. And I know some of you may be asking why don't I use the cameras more? Uh, there's a simple answer to that. I basically was running short on battery power um, because I was having to use my phone tab as my sat nav. Now, my phone tab is not a phone size, it's the size of a tablet. It's, I think it's about a 9 inch screen. So it uses far more battery power than it actually um, can charge. So when I'm using it to get from A to B, it's actually draining the battery even though it's plugged in charging. Um, it's one of the downsides of it which became a problem once I get to France because the battery became flat <laughs> on the worst roads because uh, obviously I don't know where I'm going. I know roughly I'm heading towards Paris but beyond that not a lot else so I then started the, uh, the challenge of finding places to charge my phone directly into a power socket rather than off the car battery which was only trickle charging but here we are on the ferry and it's been a long night and I'm about to go and have a breakfast I think breakfast was there at £10 but it, when you're on your way back to your loved ones that you haven't seen for a year you don't really care if you get overcharged here and there um, oh and the other thing is I bought a pack on the on the boat for um, driving in France because the headlights go the other way so you have to put these little screen things on there plus you need to have a breathalyzer, a high-vis jacket, all these sort of bits and pieces I have to say though I don't have a lot of footage from being in France for the first part because my phone went dead um, but I will say that the petrol stations and the motorways were fantastic and I made it to Paris in very very good time um, I stopped at a little hotel which wasn't the best of hotels but I'm not grumbling because at the end of the day travel for a day worn out all I want to do is sleep and wake up ready for my flight the following day so no phone, no complaints here so here I am the hotel premier class um, there wasn't anything premier about it except maybe a premier team that was being relegated it was a basic hotel room the toilet and bathroom is basically in a modular cell almost it's dropped in there bedrooms are comfortable um, although I didn't really need three beds no complaints on the hotel though is good for the money um, if you need to get to the airport, the shuttle buses easily accessible. But for me, because I actually had a car with me, my car was actually being. Um, I, I got to go and find this place first thing in the morning, drop my car there, and they shuttle bus me back to the airport. So it was all like, you know, because everything was sort of like had to run like clockwork, you're not as comfortable as you should be and you just want to make sure everything runs well so you do everything a little bit early so turning up to get the car dropped off and everything you're, you're trying to do it about an hour early just so that there's no problems with getting to the airport you don't mind sitting around in the, the airport lounge if you have to spend a little bit longer there so I've now flown from Paris airport the Charles de Gaulle airport I uh, arrived in Changi, Singapore and I've got a bit of a wait over but I've still got to travel between the different terminals the the rail system in China is pretty good um, I have to admit it's the airport itself is spotless and very well automated um, no complaints whatsoever <laughs> um, flight was on time and as you can see with the rail network is very efficient but I actually believe it's um, completely automated as well there's no drivers as you can see I'm right at the front of the 
the tram or train um, and we're off, off to the next terminal so that we can pick up the flight. Uh, quite, a, quite a large airport. So, although being back was good and happy times also meant that we we're preparing to leave. So, for me it was a time for spending with the kids and for April and the kids it was time to spend with her parents but also for the religious side there was a visit to the cemetery for the past relatives and also a visit to the church to remember everybody as well so it was a mix of different types of emotions some of its arrival some of its leaving some of its remembrance um it was a bit of a strange time because obviously Cebu is home to me and still is so leaving it seemed a little bit strange but at the same time the kids future and schooling uh, was a lot more important to me than my own personal gain <laughs> 